Coming up on this week's edition of Aggie News. After a contentious campaign, the results are in for who will take the seat as the 47th President of the United States. And we will show you that our Aggies were in full force as both journalism grads and current students were a huge part of the media coverage in both North Carolina and around the nation. There is also a course that has been added to the North Carolina A&T Curriculum Guide, and it's sweeter than you think. We have those stories and more as Aggie News begins right now. Welcome to the Aggie News Broadcast. I'm your news anchor, Kai Fisher. And I'm Olivia Brooks. The race for the 47th U.S. President has been decided with Donald J. Trump, the victor with 295 of the electoral votes. Trump will now have a second term in office despite losing in 2020 and facing a criminal conviction. Mm -hmm. President-elect Trump won the key battleground state of North Carolina by 51.1% to Harris's 47.7%. Trump says this will be a new era. This is a magnificent victory for the American people that will allow us to make America great again. Oh. VP Kamala Harris conceded the race and addressed her supporters on the campus of her alma mater, Howard University. The Democratic nominee urged the crowd to accept the 2024 election results and says she will keep up the fight. While I concede this election, I do not concede the fight that fueled this campaign. The fight, the fight for freedom, for opportunity, for fairness, and the dignity of all people. Attention should also be paid to the fact that Republicans won a U.S. Senate majority, but neither party has appeared to have an edge in the fight to control the House of Representatives, where Republicans currently hold a narrow majority. North Carolina a and students turned out in record numbers at the early polling site in Dudley Building on campus. Approximately 6,487 voters casted a ballot. Numbers at the Election Day polling site Fry Hall have not been confirmed, but unofficial numbers say out of 3,180 registered voters in the precinct, only 164 ballots were cast. As election results and numbers continue to be confirmed, you can find this information on websites such as ncsbe.gov or guilfordcountync.gov. Students from ANT's Journalism and Mass Communications Department visited WGHP Fox 8 News Station in High Point on election night. JOMC students got hands-on experience with data entry for local elections and one-on-one -on -one experience on the most anticipated nights of the year. Students observed the fast-paced newsroom environment and got a behind-the-scenes look at election night reporting. The vice president of Fox 8 News, Kevin Daniels, shares why it is important to give a and students these opportunities. I think it's really important to show the students, especially at a and um, what, what goes into a show, what goes into election night. And then maybe it spurs you to do a little bit more and spurs you to enter the field. Uh, we need really good, smart, honest people. And this is kind of part of a, like a recruiting tool as well. We are proud here at Crosby to say that we had our own JOMC alum working for the stations around the country covering their first major election in the news industry. Former Aggie News team members Gabriel Woodard, Kayla Collier, and Mercy Secor spent their election night on the clock in various states. We are proud to recognize these three exceptional graduates for making waves in journalism and media. Kayla Collier, an MMJ at KWQC News 6 in Iowa. Mercy Secor, a digital content producer at WEWS News 5 in Ohio. 
and Gabriel Woodard, a news producer at WTKR News 3 in Virginia. Each played a vital role in covering this historic election. These talented Aggies represent NC, a and in our community on a national stage. Showcasing the strength and impact of our alumni in the media. Keep shining and showing the world what Aggie pride looks like. We will continue our political talk with specialty reporter Jayan Guide with Pride People in Politics. Jayan, give us the latest on the governor's election. Thanks, Kai. Hey guys, so Attorney General Josh Stein has won North Carolina over to be the next governor. He took a 12-point lead against opponent Mark Robinson. Now Aggie News correspondent Deja Garner actually witnessed the Democratic watch party in Raleigh for Stein. And she says that Democrats were pretty confident about the turnout of the governor election. Attorney General was introduced by the current governor, Roy Cooper, and he will begin to pass the power to Democrat Josh Stein. He ended off his his speech was speaking to all North Carolina residents about serving all parties through his political plan. We are now going to take a quick break, but we will be back with more Aggie news in just a few moments. Let me tell you something about the tri-state area. We have it all. Food, culture, business, the most unique people on the planet. Diverse neighborhoods have diverse needs. What happens here? is just as vital as what happens here. That's why we live in the communities we serve. Reporting for the communities we serve. So when big things happen, you get the answers you need now. We know this because we, 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 we live here too. Welcome back to Aggie News Broadcast. We have been in summer, in fall, and now it looks like we're in for a gloomy weekend. Chandler, Tell us about what we should be expecting for this upcoming week. Thank you, Olivia. Good morning, everyone. As we are still adjusting to earlier sunrises and sunsets brought on by the end of daylight savings time, we now have a damp and dreary morning in sight with a 60% chance of scattered showers accompanied by light and variable winds. The daytime heating temperature will peak in the low 70s with the evening bringing clearer skies. Keep the rain gear out for the entirety of the week as the future cast shows rounds of showers throughout Friday with high levels of humidity. Temperatures will register in the low 70s through Wednesday. Then it will begin to feel like fall with considerably cooler temperatures in the 60s. The gloominess and rain will move out Friday just in time for you to grab your jackets, hats, and scarves and enjoy a dry Saturday. With the end of daylight savings time in full effect, students everywhere are feeling the impact of the clock change on their daily routines. What many don't know is, the transition to daylight savings time can cause many short-term and long-term effects on their physical and mental health. According to Dr. Phyllis C.Z., sleep medicine specialist and chief of sleep medicine in the Department of Neurology at Northwestern Medicine, daylight savings time can create short-term health problems, sleep issues, fatigue, and changes in blood pressure that feel like prolonged jet lag. Daylight savings time has also been linked with an 11% spike in depressive episodes, slow metabolism, weight gain, and cluster headaches. To combat this season, experts recommend that students keep a sleep routine, chase the morning light, eliminate any sleep disturbances, and exercise in the mornings. Continuing with talking about health, grab your running shoes and your capes because Dave's Superhero Run and Walk Health Fair is coming to Greensboro next Saturday. The Rosa Foundation is hosting a combination run, fundraiser, and health fair that both gives health screenings to the public and also raises money for families in the NICU with financial needs. This event is honored in loving memory of Dave, a baby who passed due to heart failure at one and a half years old. The event will be held at Country Park on November 16th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. For more details on the run and registration, go to rosa-foundation.com. Well, it's time to take a tasty turn into something new. Here's a story that we are sure you'll like. Haley Pender has all the delicious details. Chocolate. We love it and can digest it in many different forms. But now, a t is taking the suite to a whole new level by offering a three-credit course on its history. 
Associate Professor in the College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences, Dr. Roberta Claro da Silva, was awarded a USDA grant to create the first academic course about chocolate at an HBCU. So they will learn from the plant, from the bean to bar, all the development of a chocolate bars. So they will uh, also um, learn about ch chemistry, about the processing, all the mach mach machinery that they need to use, uh, and also marketing, how to market in chocolate. Dr. Silva will spend the rest of this academic school year designing the curriculum. The course will first be offered in fall 2025. In Greensboro, North Carolina a and Haley Pender, Aggie News. Thanks, Haley. I know that class will definitely be full. Well, after the break, we will segue into a moment of loving memory to an influential music legend. Stay with us. Let me tell you something about the tri-state area. We have it all. Food, culture, business, the most unique people on the planet. Diverse neighborhoods have diverse needs. What happens here? is just as vital as what happens here. That's why we live in the communities we serve. Reporting for the communities we serve. So when big things happen, you get the answers you need now. We know this because we, 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 we live here too. Welcome back to Aggie News. We begin with the passing of legend known as Q. On November 3rd, we lost producer, songwriter, and icon Quincy Jones. Working with artists like Michael Jackson, Beyonce, and Aretha Franklin, Quincy Jones left a permanent mark on the music industry. Quincy Jones received numerous awards for his work in the music and TV movie industries. Jones won 28 Grammys and had success producing songs like Thriller, the soundtrack from the 1985 movie adaptation of The Color Purple, and We Are the World. His impact was nothing short of amazing, as we honor him as the music pioneer that he was. Rest in power, Quincy Jones. Switching gears, historic legends to current newsmakers, our journalism and mass communications department invited ESPN anchor Michael Eaves for a virtual visit. Chandler Anderson takes a look at the Emmy award-winning journalist who delivered some industry knowledge and wisdom to our students. Multi-award winning sports journalist and ESPN anchor Michael Eaves spoke to students in the JOMC and law department to talk about perfecting your storytelling, having a good work ethic, and utilizing your NABJ networks here at Crosby Hall. The two things I learned from Mr. Eaves today were the importance of being a good writer and having a great work ethic. Michael Eaves graduated from the University of Kentucky and was an NABJ student getting his degree in journalism. He has won four Emmy Awards with Fox Sports, Anchor for Sports Center, and many more accomplishments. Students join Miss Watson's 12 o'clock class to hear the important advice Michael Eaves had to give and even ask a few questions. How do you approach covering stories that might have broader social and political issues? After his discussion, he gave his final remarks, leaving students internship ready. <laughs> This is Chandler Anderson reporting live from Crosby Hall. There's more Aggie news after this, so stay with us. Let me tell you something about the tri-state area. We have it all. Food, culture, business, the most unique people on the planet. Diverse neighborhoods have diverse needs. What happens here is just as vital as what happens here. That's why we live in the communities we serve. Reporting for the communities we serve. So when big things happen, you get the answers you need now. We know this because we, 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 we live here too. Welcome back to Aggie News. The Lady Aggies have a historic matchup coming up on their schedule. Let's go over to our reporter, Micah Cannon, with Aggie Sports. You're right, Olivia. Our Lady Aggies do have a pretty big matchup on the way, and our women's bowling team gets ready to open up MEAG play while struggles on the football field continue for the Aggies. It's not every season where you can make history like the Lady Aggies have a chance to on next Tuesday, November 12th. While our Lady Aggies have dropped their first two games, losing to SMU in the season opener 64-77, and the next game just by a single point to Rice University 60-61, those two losses can be silenced, and they can make some major noise uh, coming in and welcoming the 15th ranked team in the country, North Carolina Tar Heels, into Club Corbett. 
A win for the Aggies would give our women's basketball program their first win against a ranked Division I Power 5 opponent in history. Not to mention, it would be a great sell when it comes to signing recruits. Join us at Corbett Gym on November 12th at 6 p.m. to cheer on our Lady Aggies in an attempt to make history for their program. From one hardwood floor to another, the women's bowling team season has rolled in and they are knocking down opponents left and right. Our reporter Katrina Taylor got a look into how the bowling season is going so far. The sixth nationally ranked bowling team is so back and is looking forward to seeing fellow Aggies show support. Previously, they traveled to Orlando and went 9-4 in what Coach Kim says was one of the strongest fields they will face this year. Four-time reigning Coach of the Year, Coach Kim, has high expectations for the rest of the season. We do have some upperclassmen that have been here that know what it takes to, to you know, be in a position to win a national championship. Well, they set that example every day in practice, every day in competition, you know, what is needed, what work, work ethic looks like, what hard work looks like. So just a couple of those promising players include four-time MEAC Weekly Award winner Chloe Newberry and one of the highest recruited players in the country, former MEAC Bowling Rookie of the Week, Victoria White. You know, every year we've, we've managed to bring in good players and we've managed to keep the, uh, the success of the program sort of going. It's just been about building the right culture and getting the best players that we can here. Don't miss out on getting the chance to see this stack team here in action for their first home meet here at Triad Lanes. This year, they had their chance to pursue their fifth MEAC title in seven seasons, starting with this conference match. Katrina Taylor, Aggie News. Our women bowling Aggies continue their dominance while the Aggies on the gridiron continue to struggle. In their first game against William & Mary, or excuse me, their last game against William & Mary, they fell 45 to seven. Colin Avery was there for us and has a full reca game recap for us. Welcome back, Aggies, and welcome back to Truist Stadium. We're back for another home game for the Aggies, and we have a new opponent this time. This is the first time that William & Mary will take on the North Carolina a t Aggies, and there's a special rivalry brewing. The, our head coach, Vincent Brown, used to coach at William & Mary two years ago where he was a defensive coordinator. Will the team play with an extra edge and end this five-game losing streak? We'll see when we kick off. William & Mary wasted no time getting the ball into the end zone, scoring on their first three offensive possessions. They connected on a big 58-yard touchdown right here, and Malachi Emo scored his first of three touchdowns on the day. The Aggies were driving at the end of the half and had a chance to put points on the board, but quarterback Justin Farnby ended up taking a sack with no time left, and the Aggies went into halftime with a 28-point deficit. Shamik Blizzard was the primary source of offense for the Aggies, running for 132 yards, and he ended up scoring the only Aggies touchdown of the game. William & Mary put this game well out of reach with this touchdown right here from Bronson Yoder, and that was all she wrote for the Aggies. The Aggies fell 45-7 to and take on another top 25 team in the Villanova Wildcat next week. I'm here reporting for Aggie News, Colin Avery. Thank you, Micah. As we close out this broadcast, we want to make sure you all get an early start to this holiday season. The Office of Student Activities is hosting their annual holiday celebration in the Student Center. There will be various games, activities, and so much more geared toward getting everyone into the spirit of giving. The event will be capped off with the tree lighting ceremony on November 11th at 5 p.m. Please come out and join us. Thank you for watching this week's edition of Aggie News. We will be back next Monday to give you more stories on campus updates and news through the Triad area. See you next week.